Thank you, Professor Goria, for the presentation. I will try to stay in my time, I'll pass, okay. Um, this is um, an expanded version of the presentation I have uh, presented uh, two days ago in the Interpol uh, sub-working group uh, uh, closed meeting we had. And, and uh, I take the chance to congratulate again uh, with Dr. Selina Leon. She was just uh, being elected deputy chair of this sub-working group. And I am happy to share with you one of our uh, latest uh, projects we are developing in uh, the University of Turin in the Human Identification Laboratory, which is uh, something that uh, was started uh, after uh, and during the pandemic. Um, the name of the presentation is Introducing to You this project, which we have called Virdentopsy, Remote, Virtual and Digital Dental Autopsy. So this presentation is uh, basically offering uh, a, a potential innovative solution in the human identification of unidentified human remains. And maybe I think we could consider it a global solution in the application of best practice in human identification and human rights respect of the dead. As uh, Dr. Eddie Devalk said, we have to rely and we have to still rely on dental data to achieve um, a positive identification. And in order to achieve this, uh, we need to be able to assess and collect dental data. But the idea of using uh, uh, a known invasive imaging methods to perform a virtual autopsy, of course, is not our idea. It was already presented and starting in the middle of the 90s with a project, uh, uh, with the, with the project of Professor Richard Dirnhofer from the University of Bern in Switzerland. They started developing this uh, virtual auto autopsy process, which was first presented in 2001 at a German forensic meeting. And then it became known, we all know the term virtopsy. Uh, right now, there are few institutions who have recognized the feasibility of a remote dental autopsy, but none of them has focused on offering a forensic teleconsultation for the purpose of humanitarian forensics and for the purpose of promoting humanitarian forensic odontology. We all follow the uh, lessons learned and the uh, provisions of the International Committee of the Red Cross and their, uh, and their forensic unit. And if we reread all their publications, it is highlighted that every effort should be made to ensure the reliable identification of the dead. And this is the reason why we started our group in 2015, which then became the Association Forensic Odontology for Human Rights, because we realized that we needed to start considering the respect of the unidentified human remains, particularly their human rights. So let me highlight a concept which you already know it is interesting for me to stress on this concept the dental autopsy is a process where we collect dental data this means that the dental autopsy if we consider only the post-mortem collection in itself it can be performed also by colleagues with no specific forensic background on the other hand, the human identification process is not simply the collection, but is the analysis of the dental data that has been collected, and then the comparison with the anthropomorphic data, which must be performed this time, not by generic dentists, not by clinical dentists, not by other, ex by other forensic experts, but only and exclusively by forensic odontologists, experts, also in disaster victim identification. This is the reason why 
a dental autopsy, a virtual dental autopsy can become a resource because this would allow remote forensic odontologists to offer a second expert opinion or offer an extra analysis of the post-mortem dental data collected somewhere else in the world. During last year, and we're still facing this this year, unfortunately, we, as you know, we are facing also the COVID-19 pandemic and also the infection risks, which, by the way, has always been applied in all human uh, human uh, human identification process. We cannot we cannot know if there are any infection risks risks when we perform any autoptic procedures. So we were already ready to work in this kind of scenarios. But of course, the COVID-19 has opened also challenges in the, in, the, in, the, in the field of human identification because we have to balance safety with the human identification need and the respect of the human rights. To summarize, even if there is the risk, we should always apply best practice in human identification. This means that if we have human remains to be identified, we must still collect all primary identifiers. In order to do this, we uh, highlighted in a paper we wrote with uh, Emlata Pandey and Francesco Lupariello some recommendations to be applied during dental autopsy in uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, why we arrive at virdentopsy? Virdentopsy is the concept of uh, performing uh, a virtual, digital, and remote dental autopsy. We decided to register the name, and this is, you see on the top of the slide, the name and the logo which has been registered in last March. Let me highlight that it has no commercial applications, no commercial benefits. We decided to create the terminology because we thought that it was important to fix this name and to propose this tool. Once again, let me highlight proposing it for on a humanitarian basis. It is created by merging the term virtual and dental autopsy. And uh, it was uh, um, the idea started uh, one year back in 2019 when I was involved uh, uh, in uh, the DVI uh, process of the victims of the Ethiopian Airlines 302 in Addis Ababa. When I was there, I was the only Italian odontologist who were participating in the DVI. And uh, in the in the victims, there were nine nationalities as well as many other nationalities. So I thought, what if it would be possible to send two colleagues of the same nationalities involved a disaster to have their second expert opinion because we, in order to have uh, those benefits that can come from the nationalities of the same victims who may be involved in a disaster. Those of you who have been involved in disasters more than me, like Eddie, know very well that uh, there are so many nationalities involved because with the globalization, if there is an, an accident, a natural or a terroristic attack, unfortunately, we will have to face victims from several nationalities. On the other end, we cannot call all colleagues on site, except in a very special emergency uh, scenarios like uh, what happened in the tsunami in 2004. But usually in disasters where there are so many nationalities, you cannot call all the DVI teams on site. Sometimes you can. Sometimes you can't, sometimes you cannot afford to have all these experts appointed because it's also a cost to be afforded. So in order to have the benefit of a second opinion of the nationalities, of the odontologists, of the victims involved, virdentopsy could be a possible solution. So what is a virdentopsy? Virdentopsy is simply the collection of what we usually do normally when we do a dental autopsy. But the difference is specifically in the collection of the, this data. 
So we can do a 2D and 3D video recording. We will do the photographic collection of the human remains, teeth and jaws. We will be using also photogrammetry with the intraoral scanners. We will collect, of course, the X-ray images of jaws and teeth. Also, we could rely on a remote live intraoral examination in, in streaming using a smartphone or using smart glasses. And then by receiving all this data, we perform a report, a biological profile of all, analyzing all this data without having the need to be on site. So this is, we all are, are, are aware of this, what is this is the intra, one of the so many intraoral scanners that dentists use to do optical impressions of jaws and teeth. Uh, as Eddie was saying, uh, this can be used not only to scan, will be, be used to do a 3D printing of jaws and teeth, which can be done anywhere else in the world by transmitting uh, this data. This is what, what you, if you have never seen what, how you work, this is how it works. It is uh, practically doing uh, uh, an impression of jaw. You just move around and while you are scanning, you have real time the 3D of the, the, what you are scanning with using the photogrammetry technology. With the 3D you see now on the screen, you can then transmit this 3D to a 3D printer. And then you will have, of course, if you need, the 3D models, even if you are not on site. Um, I will not go uh, into the, the collection of X-ray, but this is what we use when we do uh, dental autopsy. We will use a, a portable X-ray device. We will use a, a digital sensor. And uh, by collecting these X-rays, also these images can be transmitted remotely for an expert opinion by colleagues who are not present on site. Here is what you would probably do if you do a videntopsy using this uh, protocol that we suggest. We have a, somebody who is a colleague, but he can be a dentist, he can be a pathologist, he can be any uh, person who is authorized in the mortuary, who is observing and looking at jaws and teeth like you see in this picture. So he's observing, he's using smart glasses, as you can see here. So he's observing the jaws, he's observing the teeth, and we are watching real time somewhere else where we are remotely uh, in our office, for example. So what he is observing is what we are observing real time on our monitor, like this. So this is the... Uh, this is the, what we would be using. This is uh, our website because uh, we also opened a website called virdentopsy.it because that the, the portal, the website is the tool to allow colleagues to upload pictures and data. And this, so by registering on the virdentopsy.it website, you can then start transmitting the data that you are collecting. Either the data you are collecting real time or the data that you have recorded and then you save and then you transmit to us. The, we connect with the app and this is what the, the colleague was, was, saw, was seeing in the previous picture, and we could real time see what he is seeing using our monitor. As you can see here, this tool is also interesting from the pandemic point of view and for the training point of view, because you have only one operator on site, but this allows 10, 20, 30 colleagues to be somewhere else, even in a university room like here, and able to see 
what is Luwing because we can also use a white screen. And this, is, uh, this makes this tool so interesting also from the point of view of training in forensic odontology because you don't need to have 20 to 30 people in the mortuary room because people can stay in a classroom without uh, pay, uh, risking the infection of being next to human remains. The, the app that you can use is very easy and we have been using it for so many years. It's simply TeamViewer. TeamViewer has been lately this year upgraded with the live streaming feature, which was not there before. So by, using, uh, sim by simply using TeamViewer, you can use smart glasses or you can even use your smartphone because as Eddie was saying, our technology nowadays allows smartphones like the one we have now to be so uh, so high definition uh, pictures that we don't need to buy any more expensive photographic uh, uh, tools because the mo mobile mobile phone, as I will show you, is already so high in definition that it is uh, sufficient to allow us to observe jaws and teeth as if we are on site. So let's imagine again, we have human remains. We have human remains that we want to observe. We are somewhere in the world, somewhere, anywhere. And we need uh, somebody else, like for example, Eddie in Belgium to express uh, his uh, expert opinion. So it, we don't want him to pay, we don't want him to fly and we, don't, we cannot afford a flight. We cannot afford uh, accommodation. So we ask a colleague, it can be in Belgium, it can be in Italy to perform an assessment based on the images that we will send to him remotely. Let's imagine we find these human remains, okay? We have this mandible and we want to have a second opinion or we want to have an opinion of an expert odontologist because we feel that the nationality of these human remains may be Belgium or maybe Italian. So what do what we do? we are using our smartphone this is the picture i have been the video of, you can obtain simply by using your smartphone you can see that if we pause the picture if we pause the picture we can see the details i mean i can see very Clearly, maybe my screen is a high definition screen i don't know which computer you are using but uh, the video is so clear that we could have ideas of what is this jaw. Of course, we can then go ahead in doing a vestibular, a vestibular imaging of the same mandible so that we can have the occlusal, the vestibular and the lingual aspect. You see that we can do this and we can enlarge the pictures, we can stay enlarge and then and by enlarging the picture because of the high definition of the picture we don't lose details and this is the lingual the lingual surface of the same mandible so we are receiving a video recording of the occlusal vestibular and lingual aspect and we can, of course i've done it in in very quick but imagine you can do this in two ways. You can record and then transmit this video, or you can use a live streaming tool to show to a remote colleague what you are watching. If you want to use the, the, the smart glasses, this is one of the smart glasses that are available on the market. I will not say the brand and on the other side this is me taking the video i was showing you just now just using my iphone 12 which is so high in the definition of the quality which you don't which means that you don't need to buy any photographic i mean i have three cameras three expensive cameras which i've been buying in the years and now i have to simply put with the ring with myself just by smartphone so imagine the, that I am remotely receiving your data. I am in my office receiving your data, either live streaming or recorded. And this is 
what I actually is the same tool of the smart glasses to show you what I see here is what you see in the screen. This is what anyone could see in the screen in any place in the world. The advantage of using uh, uh, smart glasses, on the other hand, uh, rather than simply a recording, is that uh, they have uh, so the so-called uh, augmented reality. In terms of innovations, uh, following what uh, Eddie was saying, this is what uh, these glasses, smart glasses, allows you to do, because this allows you to do these pictures and to highlight to the colleague who is doing the assessment or who is doing the collection and tell him real time, look, can you go, can you go on this tooth? Look, can you stop one second on this other tooth? And highlight him to him using uh, tools that you can use through the augmented reality. We actually see through the smart glasses, these arrows, even if they are not on, on what we are seeing. This is our uh, room in our uh, of, in our uh, university. So, in our view, our proposal, this procedure can offer a solution is in mass disaster where these are scenarios when multinational victims are involved, but is also a useful tool even in single autopsy of unidentified human remains of unknown nationalities. So VidDentopsy can broaden the horizon of a, video, of a virtual digital and remote dental autopsy involving as many odontology as we need from different countries without the need to be physically on site, allowing, of course, elevating also the level of the, of the assessment. Because rather than having one or two expert opinion, we can practically rely on as many expert opinion as we need. And we can also rely on the expert opinion of colleagues of the same nationalities of the victims involved in the disaster. Again, no more risk of doing visual identification. So there is no more excuses. The excuses could be, we don't have odontologists on site. We don't have forensic odontologists on site. We cannot afford forensic odontology on site, but this is now an excuse because even if you don't have any colleagues on site, even if you cannot afford a forensic odontology assessment from experts, you can use this tool and rely on a forensic dental assessment of experts in forensic odontology and DVI, even if you cannot afford them, even if you don't, cannot recruit them, even if they are not available on site. So possible application to summarize, we can use this tool in missing and unidentified persons. We can use this uh, process in, the, in disaster and victim identification. We can use this tool for training and teaching forensic odontology. And also, you can use this tool also for uh, teleconsultation in forensic odontology. Use the performing age estimation, simply transmitting X-rays or doing a bite mark analysis is as a second opinion, but this can also be used and I am, and I am already using it because of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic for malpractice and insurance uh, teleconsultations because we cannot have lawyers and colleagues entering your dental clinic because we cannot have more than five people in our dental clinic by using this tool that is just me and the patient and one lawyer and we do the assessment as I will show you with the next slides. Also, this, this tool allows us to be an interesting resource for those colleagues who work on ancient human remains, like anthropologists, archaeologists, and paleopathologists, which usually don't rely on a forensic odontological assessment. But this, as you know, could be interesting because the biological profile for human identification is also the biological profile that is required when you are are working on archaeological sites and excavations. So this is me in my dental clinic and I am wearing the smart glasses and this is not a forensic 
aspect, it's a legal insurance aspect because I have to perform a teleconsultation on the patient. I have to involve real time the other colleagues who are involved in this uh, proceeding in the court, but I cannot have them in my dental clinic because of the pandemic. So they are connected remotely. And this is me visiting the patient. This is me doing also a picture using smart glasses. This is another um, tool. You, uh, I will not say the brand. You can find it on the web, on the, on the market. It's an interesting tool that allows you to do intraoral pictures. And this is what you do. You simply use your smartphone. You connect to these. And then you do the picture doing using your uh, your mobile phone. So the advantages, as I said, if there are no forensic odontologists available, you can rely on one or more remote forensic odontologists. And most of all, this tool, it's a, it's a very strong and powerful tool in the field of humanitarian forensic odontology. You can have a second opinion on all post-mortem dental data and even on bite mark lesions this, of course, will reduce dramatically the cost of the consultation, can even speed up the forensic identification of human remains because it will complete the post-mortem data collection with the, the evaluation and assessment analysis of dental data. And again, as I said, it is also interesting in ancient human remains because our expertise can also be useful when we deal with the jaws and teeth, even of ancient human remains. Let me thank uh, the, my colleague Corrado Cali, who is a researcher in, the human, in human anatomy at the University of Turin in Italy. One last remark, and one last remark is fundamental because this conference is also supported by the Association Forensic Odontology for Human Rights, the association that promotes humanitarian forensic odontology and with president-elect Mlata Pandey and the board of the AFOR, we decided to work on eight forensic odontology sustainable goals. The goal number four is pro bono forensic dental services. We are the only association that promotes volunteering work within the field of forensic odontology. And if this can be uh, now a problem because we, uh, it is very complicated nowadays to travel, we can still offer humanitarian forensic odontologists and all colleagues interested are welcome to join in this Vivdentopsy project by offering their expertise, simply staying home. With that said, let me invite you, and this is the last, last slide, to a future course which could be interesting for you. We are organizing next year at the University of Turin. Turin is where this red dot is, it's in the north of Italy, as you can see here. And we are organizing a course to become an expert in DVI, expert in disaster victim identification, also known as DVI specialist. It will be a course running from April to June 2022. It will have most of lessons online tool, but of course, being um, a training and hands-on course, you will have to come to Turin for the hands-on training at least for one week. With that said, Vi ringrazio per l'attenzione. I thank you for your attention and again enjoy the rest of the meeting.